I'm Maria Soreo here from Staples Center. It's the Battle of Los Angeles. Let's just say part one since they're going to play four games with the Los Angeles Clippers and the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, of course, the Lakers are not getting off to the start that we all thought they would. They've lost all of their preseason games. They lost to Dallas in their opener, and they lost to Portland. So it's game number three against the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, everybody in the Lakers locker room saying, calm down, it's going to be fine. I was actually in the locker room with some of the players after game one. Here's what they had to say. It's about the 15 guys and the coaching staff that we have here. Um, if we win 55 games, 60 games, we should have won five or six more. So no matter, we understand no matter what we do, the expectation is going to be higher. Uh, we just know the overall goal is to win the championship and and, uh, and, and so forth. But, um, you know, we just worry about what we can control in here. And uh, tonight we didn't do that. But... Um, you know, I think uh, for a lot of guys who have been in this situation, you know, uh, a lot of the big time guys here, they understand that. But for a lot of guys who, you know, this is their first rodeo and, and so forth, uh, as far as the media attention and uh, the things that's going to be said, you know, we just have to um, realize what's important. And that's the 15 guys on this, this roster and the coaching staff. and. Just every day, just try to get better and, and improve and, you know, just eventually get to the point as far as uh, playing the game the way it's supposed to be played and, and playing the game the way we know we're capable of playing as well. We're thinking too much. Okay. A player's call, guys get the ball, and we're thinking about where we should be, mm -hmm. what we should do, and, and so forth. And that's a natural reaction. I think eventually uh, we will get to the point where – we know the plays, we're going through our cuts, we're going through our progressions, and things will be second nature to us. But uh, right now, um, that is an adjustment. That is something that we're going to have to be more patient with, and that's why we have to rely on what we do defensively. But, um, you know, you just see it. You know, guys are sometimes out of spots, and then when we're out of spots, we're trying to get to the spots, and it's just, you know, getting us discombobulated and things of that nature. But. Um, that's going to take patience. It's going to take time, but eventually, you know, we will get to that eventually where it's just flowing and guys are, we've seen, you know, uh, scenarios where it's just, it's going to benefit us in the long run. We know what we have to improve on. We know where a lot of our mistakes were made at. Um, the one thing that we know, no matter who we play, uh, they're going to come with their A game. They're going to come very hard, and uh, they're going to compete at a high level. And that's something that, um, you know, whether it's the team with the worst record or the team with the best record. And uh, our history with Portland, you know, and I, this is my first Rough. <laughs> I've known what they've done in the past, and those fans are going to be geared up tomorrow. So now we have to uh, not only – be a great home team, but we have to be an awesome road team. We have to be together. Uh, we have to learn from our mistakes like we did tonight and be able to uh, stay focused and, uh, you know, stay focused on the task at hand and, and be ready for games like tomorrow with the season open and uh, being on a, a tough road crowd and, you know, just trying to execute the things that we need to do uh, offensively and defensively and just improve on our mistakes from our previous game. You know, so it's really no excuse. You know, at this point, it, it is what it is. We lost that game today, and there's no excuse. What do you feel like you have to work the most on as a team? Just, you know, just go out there and play and win. That's it. Go out there and play and win. It's real simple. It's really that simple. I don't even really know what else to work on. <laughs> I wish I did. I wish I could tell you, but, you know. Chemistry is that school. I'm, I'm, I'm out of school. <laughs> And I'm afraid because chemistry blows things up. And how about just using the word love or something? That's better. Because chemistry, I, I don't know. I like love and togetherness. Are y'all loving each other yet or no? Yeah, yeah we, love, we, we do. We really do. Well, Ron Artest always has a lot to say, that's for sure. All right, now with more on the Clippers, I'm going to throw it over to Will Lepardis. Well, thank you, Maria. We are here at Staples Center, and it's not opening night, but it feels like opening night because it is Lakers-Clippers game one of their regular season matchup, one of four. 
Now, we saw the Clippers defeat the Memphis Grizzlies. They are now 1-0. We heard from Blake Griffin. We heard from Chris Paul. But there is a new gentleman on the team named Jamal Crawford. He had 29 points in 29 minutes. We spoke to the new star of the Clippers. Yeah, it's kind of the debut you dream about, you know, and to play well and win in front of the home crowd. You knew it was going to be a sellout crowd, and, and the energy was going to be there, and, and you just want to play well. What do you do to get ready for the team across the hall next week on Friday? Uh, we have to enjoy this one until 12 o'clock tonight, and then tomorrow we'll prepare for them, you know. And I think they lost in Portland, so they'll be ready for sure. But uh, That's a good team we just beat over there, and we knew that it was going to be hard fought, knew it was going to be chippy, and... At the end of the day, it's, it's a basketball game. At the end of it, you know, it is what it is. I told him in the locker room after the game, it's fun to be a part of this, to be a part of this, to have guys come off the bench and score effortlessly. You know, he had 29. Bled was unbelievable. And these are our so-called backups. You know what I mean? So I, it's fun for me. And I, like I told somebody in the locker room a second ago, I want to play every second of the game. But it's fun to be on the bench and to cheer guys on because of the way they're playing because it's exciting. Yeah, we, we're hoping that that's a nightly thing. And that's something L.O. and us was in there talking about. And coming off the bench with guys like Ryan Hollins and Ronnie Terry off with that energy, that's just something you can't, you can't teach, you can't coach. You know, so those guys, they know the game. They know how to play. And it's invaluable. It's invaluable. And as long as guys keep playing. And uh, here's, uh, here's my counterpart coming up here, old K. OK. One more for Chris. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Anything old, else for Chris? Old man in black. I bet you can't guess which one Blake is. <laughs> Will Smith. <I> know. <laughs> <laughs> the resemblance is uncanny, I know. Yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> We had about 14 uh, Will Smiths and one uh, other guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> I'm out of here. That's right, Maria. We are going to be very busy in this building all season. We have the Lakers and Clippers. There's big expectations out of both teams. And we don't know what's going to happen, but what we know is a lot of excitement is going to come from the LA Clippers. You know that Blake Griffin, Oklahoma Sooner, I got his back. Chris Paul, I mean, what can I say about these guys? They have a bench, though, this year. They made the playoffs. They went to. They came within a, you know, a pinch of making the Western Conference Finals last year. Well, four wins actually, but they have a bench: Lamar Odom, uh, Jamal Crawford, Matt Barnes, Ronnie Turioff. The list goes on and on. They have 12 guys who can play. So when those games come down to the wire, there's foul trouble. When there's any issue of who's going to play, Benito Negro has a tough decision. He's going to be making some tough decisions who to put in because. These, all these guys can play. So I wouldn't worry about depth this year. The Clippers have the most depth of any bench in the NBA. I'd expect a lot from them this season. Back to you, Maria. Yes, Will, we're going to have a lot more from all these teams, from Laker girls, Clipper girls, you name it, we will have it. That's all the time that we have for you today, and we'll let you know how this comes out. Lakers Clippers, I'm Maria Soraya. We'll see you next time. <laughs>